Europe's wild spaces are full of surprises. You've got wolves in the forests, bears in the mountains, bison on the plains, a solid lineup of big, impressive animals. But there's something that's quietly missing, and once you notice it, it's hard to unsee. There are no elephants, not a single species, no herds crossing the grasslands, no giants pushing through the trees, no distant rumble of heavy footsteps shaking the ground. So why did Europe end up without them? Today, we think of elephants as creatures of the tropics, icons of Africa's savannas, or Asia's dense jungles. But for most of Earth's history, they were global travelers. And Europe? Europe was one of their strongholds. The largest was the straight-tusked elephant, or Paleoloxodon antiquus, a colossal species that lived during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. It stood over 4 meters at the shoulder and weighed up to 13 tons, larger on average than today's African elephants. Fossil sites across Europe, from England to Germany to Greece, show that these animals thrived in warm, temperate environments with mixed forests and grasslands. They fed mainly on leaves, bark, and shrubs, and like modern elephants, likely needed large areas to move through to meet their dietary needs, sometimes hundreds of kilograms of food per day. Then came the woolly mammoth, or Mammothus primigenius, which appeared around 400,000 years ago. Adapted to cold steppe tundra, it had a thick coat, small ears, and a high-domed skull with massive curved tusks. Mammoths occupied the northern parts of Europe, coexisting with other cold-adapted megafauna like reindeer, saiga antelope, and woolly rhinoceros. Studies of preserved stomach contents and dung show that they fed mainly on grasses, sedges, and herbs typical for steppe grazers. On Europe's islands, evolution took a very different path. Populations of mainland elephants colonized islands like Crete, Sicily, and Malta during periods of low sea level and gradually evolved into dwarf elephants, such as Paleoloxodon falconeri, one of the smallest known. Adults stood just over one meter tall and weighed around 300 kilograms, a striking example of island dwarfism, where limited resources and lack of predators select for smaller body sizes. The extinction of Europe's elephants was tightly linked to a series of climatic and environmental changes that reshaped the continent during the late Pleistocene. But to understand why they disappeared, we have to look at the details of what actually happened to their habitats and survival strategies. Around 130,000 to 115,000 years ago, Europe was in an interglacial period, warm, humid, and dominated by mixed forests. But starting around 115,000 years ago, the last glacial cycle began. Temperatures dropped, and Europe's landscape shifted. Forests retreated southward, or fragmented into isolated patches, replaced in many areas by cold, open steppe and tundra. Fossil records show that straight-tusked elephants vanished from northern Europe by around 50,000 years ago, their range restricted to small southern refugia like the Iberian Peninsula, southern Italy, and the Balkans, already too limited to sustain viable populations long term. Meanwhile, the woolly mammoth expanded into the newly opened Mammoth Steppe, a vast, cold-adapted grassland ecosystem that stretched across northern Eurasia. But even mammoths were tightly dependent on a very specific habitat – cold, dry environments dominated by grasses, herbs, and low shrubs, known as the Mammoth Steppe. Around 15,000 to 10,000 years ago, as the last ice age ended, the climate warmed abruptly, permafrost melted, precipitation increased, and mammoth steppe transformed into moist tundra and boreal forests. This shift, called the Pleistocene-Holocene transition, was one of the fastest large-scale climate changes in recent geological history. Palynological, or pollen, studies show that grasses and herbs declined sharply, replaced by birch, pine, and spruce forests. Mammoths, adapted to grazing, faced a collapsing food base and expanding unsuitable habitat. Population genetic studies suggest their numbers were already dropping before the final extinction, with small, isolated groups unable to recover. On Mediterranean islands, dwarf elephants faced a separate problem. Rising sea levels after the last glacial maximum, about 20,000 years ago, flooded land bridges, cutting off islands like Crete, Malta, and Sicily. Small, slow-breeding island populations became genetically isolated, more vulnerable to random environmental events and resource shortages. By the time Europe's elephant populations were under environmental stress, another force had entered the picture, one that would prove decisive. Homo sapiens, 
Modern humans arrived in Europe around 45,000 years ago, during a time when both straight-tusked elephants and woolly mammoths still roamed parts of the continent. But they weren't the first hominins to encounter these giants. Neanderthals had lived alongside elephants for hundreds of thousands of years, and evidence shows they occasionally hunted or scavenged elephant carcasses. But Homo sapiens brought something new. Advanced hunting strategies, long-range weapons like spears and otlots, and highly organized social cooperation. Archaeological sites such as Leringen in Germany and La Paladrara di Cicanibio in Italy show cut marks on straight-tusked elephant bones, along with stone tools and wooden spears, confirming that humans actively hunted these enormous animals. For mammoths, the evidence is even stronger. Sites like Dolne Vistanece in the Czech Republic and Mezarik in Ukraine reveal large-scale mammoth bone accumulations, often arranged in circular patterns, thought to be parts of shelters or windbreaks. These weren't just opportunistic kills, they point to systematic hunting and use of mammoths for food, tools, fuel, and even construction. Human hunting alone probably wasn't enough to wipe out elephant populations when they were stable and widespread, but under climate-driven habitat loss and fragmentation, even small increases in adult mortality had a disproportionate impact. Large mammals like elephants and mammoths have slow reproductive rates, long gestation, extended parental care, and low offspring survival. This makes them highly vulnerable to overkill, where hunting pressure outpaces population recovery. For island dwarf elephants, the situation was even more precarious. Some evidence, like stone tools associated with elephant bones on Mediterranean islands, suggests that early human arrivals may have hunted these small, isolated populations, which, due to their tiny size and restricted range, had almost no buffer against added mortality. Looking at Europe today, it's tempting to think elephants could have just spread north over time. They're strong, mobile, and adaptable. So why didn't they? The answer comes down to a series of hard ecological and geographic barriers. Let's start with Africa. Between African elephant populations and Europe lies the Sahara, the largest hot desert in the world, covering about 9 million square kilometers. For elephants, the Sahara is an insurmountable obstacle. Elephants are water-dependent animals. They can't go more than a few days without drinking, and they require large amounts of fresh vegetation daily. The Sahara offers neither. Even during the African humid period, a time between roughly 14,800 and 5,500 years ago, when the Sahara was greener, dotted with lakes and grasslands, elephants only extended as far north as North Africa. Fossil evidence and rock art suggest they reached regions like Morocco, Algeria, and Egypt, but they never crossed into Europe. The Mediterranean Sea formed a permanent biogeographic barrier. Elephants can swim short distances, but not across open sea channels like the Strait of Gibraltar or the Central Mediterranean. From Asia, the picture isn't much easier. Asian elephants are tropical and subtropical animals, with their historical range limited to South and Southeast Asia. Their northern expansion stops well south of Europe, mainly due to two natural barriers. First, the Himalayan mountains and the Tibetan Plateau, which form a massive cold and high altitude barrier between South Asia and Central Asia. Second, arid and semi-arid zones of Central Asia, including deserts like the Karakum and Kazilkum, and dry steppes where elephants simply cannot find the water or vegetation they need. Even during warmer past periods such as interglacials, there's no evidence that Asian elephants spread into Europe. Fossil records show they stayed south, while Europe had its own native elephant species, like the straight-tusked elephant and woolly mammoth, adapted to local conditions. Even if we set aside the geographic barriers, there's another question. Could modern elephants actually survive in Europe if they were introduced today? At first glance, some parts of Europe seem like they might work for elephants. Southern Spain, Greece, or parts of Italy have warm summers, open woodlands, and seasonal water sources. But once you look closer, the challenges start adding up fast. The first and biggest issue is climate. Both African and Asian elephants evolved in warm environments. Even the northernmost Asian elephant populations live in tropical or subtropical forests where winters are mild and there's no prolonged frost or snow. Modern elephants lack any cold weather adaptations, no thick fur, no insulating fat, no reduced surface area like smaller ears or tails. In much of Europe, even in the south, seasonal cold snaps and winter frosts would push their metabolism into stress, increasing energy demands and threatening the survival of calves. 
Then there's the question of space. Elephants don't just need land, they need room to move. Studies tackling wild elephants show they often roam over hundreds or even thousands of square kilometers, adjusting their movements with the seasons to follow water and food. Europe's landscapes today are heavily fragmented, cut up by farms, highways, cities, and fences. There is no continuous wild space large enough to support their natural movement without human containment, and elephants confined to small areas face stress, resource depletion, and conflict. Food availability creates another hurdle. Elephants are generalist herbivores, but consume staggering amounts of vegetation daily. European temperate ecosystems simply don't provide that kind of year-round forage. During winter, when plant growth slows or stops, elephants would face shortages that could only be solved through intensive human feeding, turning wild survival into permanent management. And even if all this were somehow handled, one more problem looms – human conflict. In places where elephants are native, human-elephant conflict is already one of the biggest challenges in conservation. A single elephant raid can destroy a season's crops, damage defenses, water systems, and even buildings is common. In Europe, with dense human populations and intensive land use, these conflicts would escalate quickly, likely turning local people against any elephant rewilding effort. The only real possibility for elephants living in Europe today would be under carefully controlled conditions. Large, fenced reserves, safari parks, or zoological settings where their food, space, health, and social needs could be managed year-round. But that's not wild survival. It's artificial preservation. The Europe that elephants once roamed is gone, and the ones that remain today are simply no longer adapted for what Europe has become. So, while Europe has the latitude to host elephants under artificial conditions, its climate, habitats, and social landscape no longer match what elephants need to survive as wild, self-sustaining populations. They are no longer part of the ecological equation. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.